This is the Panasonic GH5, and it's been our main A camera for about 18 months now, since it was released, and that says something, because we review basically every new camera out, and we'd happily be willing to pay way more than this thing costs in order to improve our workflow or get better video quality, but I still think it's the best video camera out there. The biggest reason is going to be that it supports 4K at 60 frames per second. And I know a lot of people don't like 4K. They're like, oh, the human eye can't perceive it, which is BS. Or they don't like 60p because it looks unnatural. I think the 4K 60p in its native format looks fantastic. It seems realistic and lifelike and sharp. And so many new TVs, including my new TV, are in 4K. And you can appreciate it even if you don't have a 4K TV, if it's anything better than 1080, if it's 2.7K, you will see the difference. Even at 1080, it tends to look much better at 1080 scaled down than native 1080p video does. But here's why 4K 60p really makes a difference for us, is we're hacks. We make mistakes. We don't have everything carefully storyboarded. We don't do dailies where we review everything. We run and gun. We film as we go. And that's true of just about every YouTuber out there. 4K 60p lets us stitch together coverage when we don't have it. If we need to zoom in to fix a composition problem with the horizons off level, we can zoom a lot with this super sharp 4K video footage that you get from this thing and still have it look good. We do that all the time. We have a really nitpicky audience and nobody ever complains. We can also do in-camera cuts by just zooming in. So it looks like we have two cameras when we really just have one going. The 60p footage, we can slow that down to half speed and still have it look pretty natural. That's a great way to make something look a little bit dramatic. We use that in our gas fake pharmaceutical drug video and it was a great effect. But you can also use it to stretch any B-roll that you have because sometimes you need a little more voiceover and you didn't record enough B-roll. It happens to the best of us, right? And we've done this for sponsored videos a few times where the sponsor comes back and they want us to rephrase something or add a little bit more. And what do you know? I managed to stretch it and crop it and nobody noticed any problem. And you guys would point it out because check the YouTube comments. You guys are happy to point out flaws and I got it past you. That's the power of 4K 60p. It has saved our butt a lot. And right now there's not really another camera that can do that. So we keep shooting with the GH5, despite the fact that it has some real big problems. So now I'm gonna talk about some of those big problems. The biggest is the autofocus. I know there've been so many videos made about the GH5 autofocus and there's been firmware updates and all that and it's workable but it's not good. There's a reason we're using a Canon for filming videos like this because it'll find my face and focus on it, which means I don't need a cameraman, which means we can be more efficient. It means I can film more spontaneously. And that's stuff that makes a real difference. With the GH5, it can't do things like that. It's more, it has to be focused manually and deliberately and I can't just stick something in the frame and have it track focus like that. Okay, I know. All real filmmakers use manual focus anyway, and we will usually use manual focus when Justin's here working as the cameraman, but that's not always. There are lots of scenarios where, especially as YouTubers, you have to film yourself, and I can't recommend the GH5 for people who are gonna film themselves. It's just not good at that. The second biggest problem is the lenses. It has a micro four thirds mount, and there are a lot of good micro four thirds lenses, but there are not a lot of great micro four thirds lenses. Like what we really want is a 24 to 70 f2.8 proper full frame equivalent. That would have to be a 12 to 35 f1.4 zoom. Nothing like that exists. The closest that exists is the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8. And I had Jordan Drake from DP Review tell me that this is the lens that everybody eventually ends up using along with a Metabones adapter. This reads as f1.1 on this. And so it lets us get like full frame equivalent background blur, but it's not a native micro four thirds lens. And that means that the focusing is even worse than it is with a native micro four thirds lens. And it also means that with the adapter, it ends up being a pretty expensive combination. Nonetheless, the results are spectacular. I just wish that there were better micro four thirds lenses. We still often use other micro four thirds lenses and we manage to get nice shallow depth of field. We have our kind of favorite set of lenses that we use, but when you compare it to the full frame lenses that are available for say Canon, Nikon, Sony with a full width sensor, you just can't get that kind of effect. And it's not as important for video as it is for stills because you generally don't want super shallow depth of field, but I still miss my full frame lenses. And that's vulnerability for the Panasonic here because if 
Sony or Canon releases a new mirrorless camera and it does 4K 60p and takes full frame, yeah, you can bet I would ditch this forever. This is our typical configuration here with the Sony lav mic here on top. We use this Sony lav mic because it has two receivers built in and often Chelsea and I are both talking, so it means we can use a single receiver with two separate lav mics. And it's kind of a pain, you know, with some of the Sony cameras, you can connect it into the hot shoe and you don't need this extra cable. This extra cable gets tangled on stuff and look where the headphone jack is. You see how it connects there? And watch what happens with that cord. Right now, I'm the cameraman and I'm looking at the screen, but what if I wanna flip it around to show the talent where they are? I can't flip it because it hits that cord. So I have to pull it in like this, flip it like this, and then put it back. And then the cord is right in front of it. Like, why did they put the headphone jack right in front of the screen that you're all going to be using? So you can kind of flip it up out of the way, but it's still gonna get in the way when you go to flip it like that. It's, it's just a dumb kind of design thing. They should have just put it anywhere else. What I'd really like to see is a wireless receiver built into the camera so I don't need this extra stuff at all because honestly, we only ever use this with wireless labs or even something that attached to the bottom but was integrated into the grip and not as big and bulky with pokey antennas everywhere. Another complaint is that the menus are kind of a nightmare especially if you wanna flip from something like 30 frames a second to 120 frames a second, it requires multiple different menu options and we don't do it frequently enough that we remember where those are. So every time it's me and Justin like going through the menus being like, oh no, I think it's hidden under here. Anyway, the menus definitely need to be streamlined, especially for common tasks like that. It does support custom modes. So we've assigned those custom modes. We tried transferring the settings from one camera to our backup camera and it worked for a while, but then they lost their settings and then future transfers wouldn't work. So there's like that little bit of bugginess that has frustrated us, but honestly, it's not like we contacted support or anything to fix it. We just kind of gave up and now try to remember to do it manually. It has a lot of features we don't use, like it'll do 10-bit color out if you wanna use a 4K field monitor. And we tried that for a while, but we just didn't see the benefit to cost. It was a lot of work for us and nobody really seemed to care. So now we don't do that. Another thing we gave up doing was Vlog. Vlog does this low contrast file format that you can then process to bring up the shadows and recover the highlights and all that, but the color never quite looked right. Even with the LUTs that we were supposed to be using and the shadows always ended up with an large amounts of noise. So now we just try to avoid shooting in too high contrast situations or we'll add some light to make things better, but Vlog is pretty much off the menu. Battery life. Some people just think mirrorless cameras all have terrible battery life. This one has a great battery life. We still have to keep a spare on us, but for the most part, it gets through a shoot no problem. My one complaint is that I wish it charged via USB because we often need to charge on the go. We still have to carry an extra battery charger with us. Okay, so why not the GH5S? The GH5S, we found it to be better in the light, but with the Metabone Speed Booster on there and the lens we typically use, it pretty much offsets a big part of the difference, which is the bigger sensor on the GH5S. And the GH5S gives up that stabilized sensor and we frequently shoot handheld. So we decided just to keep with two GH5s and not pick up a GH5S. We also don't frequently shoot in really low light, like even in moderately low light, this one has been fine, no complaints. So we don't see the motivation. When I get a real camera, like an FS5 or FS7, we could but we often shoot in public places and we would like to draw as little attention to ourselves as possible. So these cameras are much more discreet because they just look like a regular stills camera. You look like a stills photographer for the most part. You pull out one of those E and G cameras and people immediately start asking questions about what sort of uh, video production you're working on. And we really like to talk to people as little as possible when we're trying to film something. Okay, uh, that's my long-term review of the GH5. I hope it's valuable. Uh, it's not one camera that does everything for us. We still use um, Canon 60 Mark II to film videos like this where I'm filming myself. We use a Sony A9 in our close-up product videos where we really need to get tight and we need to track moving subjects really quickly because the A9's autofocus is just vastly better. Um, for times when I need to shoot casually and not disturb people at all. My iPhone X does a great job and it shoots 4K 60p. My Phantom 4 Pro does 4K 60p and it literally flies, but it doesn't record sound at all. So we use a combination of a lot of different cameras, but the GH5 is the main camera that we use. And thank you Panasonic for making a camera 
That's a workhorse for somebody who produces, you know, hundreds of videos every year. We need something dependable and the GH5 has been great. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear what your favorite video camera is, what your experiences are with the GH5, what do you love that I forgot, what do you hate that I forgot, and subscribe to see more free camera reviews and tutorials too. Thanks.